So it's finally here, my favorite recipes of 2018. Let's jump into it. This was a very, very difficult year to judge. And it actually, the reason why this video is so late is because I spent all of January going out, finding recipes that people were recommending and testing them all and testing them against each other. And this was a year where there are so many good advanced mixers. It was really hard to kind of differentiate mixes between each other. It was hard to compare them against each other, especially when you're talking about different profiles. So I did things a little bit differently this year. I have one recipe that I'm going to claim is recipe of the year, but the rest aren't ranked. So it's not ranked from five to number one or, or 10 to one. Uh, they're just recipes that I think are worthy of being called recipe of the year. They're just not my favorite recipe. Only one recipe takes that spot. I also sent out a thing where you guys could vote on your favorite recipes of the year. Uh, if you went over to the Facebook group, uh, you saw a bunch of polls with different categories. So best tobacco, best fruit, uh, best dessert. And uh, you guys voted amongst yourselves which ones you thought were, were the best. So let's get, in, let's get into that and announce some of the winners there. For best dessert, third place was Alfred Pudding by Mr. Alfred Pudding. Second place was Jasmine Coconut Ice Cream by Sheer Luck Ohms. And first place was Honeycomb Custard by Nick EVZ by a pretty large margin. For best fruit and candy, number three was my recipe, Mango Yola Tango, which was really just a flavor book recipe, but people seem to enjoy that one. Second place was Snickers by Nasugamis. And first place was Camp Tiger Claw by Concrete River. Best tobacco, third place was Long Gone Lonesome Blues by Lonesome Roads. Uh, second place was Gatsby by Alfred Pudding, again on the list. And first place was Black Forest Baco by Shindo. Best simple recipe, third place, Spiced Peaches and Cream by Shindo again. One, second place, one, two, three, Cranberry Sprite by ID10T. And first place was three, two, one, Creme Brulee by Too Tall. And best clone, uh, third place, Butterscotch Reserve by NKS. Buttermilk Pie was second place by Nastugamis and first place was the Looper remix by Folk Art. So those were the winners that you guys voted on those polls. I took nominations from a previous poll and also gave you guys the option to add any other ones that I might have missed. And uh, those are the winners. So congrats to all you mixers who were some of the community's favorite recipes of the year. Now let's get to my list. Some of these recipes are on this list because of flavor, because of enjoyability, because of how much I wanna vape that stuff. Some of these recipes are on the list because of how insanely complex and innovative and, and fun the, these recipes are. And uh, some of them are a combination of, of the two. So you don't necessarily need to make the craziest, most complex mix to get on the list. And you also don't need to make technically the best recipe to get on the list. As long as your recipe is really innovative, kind of pushes the boundaries in mixing, um, it, it does things in a different way, and you're able to portray that clearly, or you give me something that's fucking really, really delicious. And then these are the recipes that I chose. So let's start off with the first one, and it is... Yes, Snickers by Nasugamis. So I picked up on this recipe uh, not too long ago, um, and mainly I looked at the recipe and I was like, there's no way this recipe is really gonna work But I had a friend who recommended it to me. It's a pretty complex recipe There's a lot going on but as an experienced mixer You can sometimes look at a recipe and be like, I don't know where this where this one's going Especially with certain ingredients involved, but man I'm glad I did mix this one up because it's such a treat now It's not a spot-on Snickers candy bar. It's kind of impossible to do but it does such a good job of giving that impression of a Snickers. You're definitely picking up chocolate, you're definitely picking up the peanuts, and you're definitely picking up the caramel. And not only that, but you're picking up each of those profiles with great imaging in the recipe. So I can pick out where that chocolate is, I can pick out where that peanut and where that caramel is. And that's what's really great about this recipe. It seems like there was a lot of care and a lot of slight tweaking going on because there's certain ingredients, like the Flavor Beer Nuts, where it could completely just destroy the mix. Now the beer nut still is really potent in this mix. And unfortunately, when you mix this up and you vape it, it's sticking to your coil, it's sticking to your tank. So you really have to be careful with that, especially if you plan on vaping anything else. That's really one of my only downsides with this recipe. 
that beer nuts is just so potent. But if you want something that combines chocolate, peanuts, and caramel in a way that doesn't kind of mash them all together, that you get that separation between those flavors, then this, this recipe is really, really well done. And I'm really happy I was able to mix it up. It's really, really delicious. It's a bit hard to say it's an all day vape. I don't think it's an all day vape, but if you want something to vape that kind of shows you how much you can throw into a mix, as long as your balance is correct and as long as you're very careful, uh, you can create something that's really, really interesting. And this is one of the first recipes that I've seen that has been really successful at emulating an actual candy bar. I don't think I've had a recipe, especially a chocolate, to do that. Even just smelling it, you pick up on it, it's, de it's delicious. It's a really, really special recipe and it, it deserves a spot on the list. Excellent job, Nasugamis. Now the next recipe that's on the list is... Yes, my good friend Matthew Cassanda makes the list this year with his IPA smoke. And in fact, I really didn't want to put this recipe on this list. I actually hate this recipe. I think it's such a stupid recipe. I think the profile is just, it's just so stupid. It makes absolutely no sense. But I cannot deny that there's something special about this mix. There's something in it. There's just something that makes you want to come back to it. It's so funky and it's so pungent and it's so trashy that it's almost uh, intriguing. So essentially what this is, is like a cigarette that's dipped in, in, in an IPA. You pick up the tobacco, you pick up those like kind of floral, uh, earthy qualities and earthy tones in the mix, and then it's kind of drenched in this, in this really accurate IPA, probably one of the more accurate IPAs that I've had. And it doesn't sound very good, and it's kind of not very good. I don't enjoy it. It's not something that I would reach for, but there is something about the flavor that is just, it, I just had to put it on the list. The use of the ingredients is really impressive as well. Um, obviously the Yakima hops in there, but it's the way he kind of blended the pucker and the lovage in there to kind of give the IPA like flavor such a pungent punch, but also a, gr a good like bridge to uh, the, the tobacco. I don't know what else to say about it. I hate it. I think it's a trashy recipe. I don't think you should mix it. Probably most of you won't, will not enjoy this mix, but the recipe is pretty damn impressive. And uh, I'm, I am happy that I did mix this up because you know, some of you might like it. I know a few people that really enjoy it. There's just something really weird about it that makes you want to come back to it. So I, I threw it on the list for that reason. Now let's move on to the next recipe and that is... So this is a, an actual IPA mix and it's almost the complete opposite of Cassandra's IPA smoke. This kind of takes uh, Fiestas and Fiascos by Concrete River and kind of capitalizes on the profile where this one is a lot more fruity, it's a lot more vibrant, there's a lot more energy involved in it, but it still retains that really nice sort of IPA kind of bitter hoppy flavor. I really, really enjoy this recipe, especially with a beer like Founders All Day IPA, which this is modeled after, which is an excellent beer. Uh, if you are someone who enjoys craft beers, if you enjoy IPAs, if you enjoy Belgian wheat beers, something that has that little bit of citrus in there, that little bit of fruitiness, uh, especially on that top note, this mix pairs up so well with those beverages. After it sits a few days as well and you crack it open and you smell it, it's just, it's it's really, really good. And this is really an ode to Yakima hops. Yakima hops is just such a great ingredient to use for this type of profile. And I think uh, Max Savage did an excellent job, job at pairing up really delicious accents with the Yakima hops and creating something that's fruity, tropical, but still kind of has that bitter tone to it that contrasts with other flavors really well, like other foods or other beers. It, there's just a really nice contrast in this mix. There's a lot of depth. The flavor stage is really, really nice. So you do pick up somewhat of the, of the accents on the edges and then you kind of get that driving bitter IPA flavor right down the middle and um, really enjoy it. Really, really good job, Max Savage. Now the next recipe on the list is... So this recipe is essentially two ingredients with some sweetener. And the reason why it's on the list is because it's so delicious. It's just so good. I was able to vape this in Vegas when we did the convention and Concrete River was there. What you doing, bro? Oh, not much. Just, just chilling. Just got lazy and made up a green apple heart candy. 
That's fucking really nice, actually. It's essentially just Capella's green apple hard candy at 12% with 3% Favor sour apple and 1% of super sweet. But what you get is the most accurate representation of a candy of a green, a green Jolly Rancher out there. It's really sticky and it's sugary and it's sweet and it kind of melts in your mouth. It just fills your mouth with like a melted green Jolly Rancher and it's just so good. And I had to put it on the list because I wanted to put something that was simple and easy but absolutely delicious on the list. And this hits that mark really well. And I know this is somewhat of kind of like a meme recipe. It's not, not supposed to be a serious recipe. But the flavor that comes from it is very serious. So if you like candies, you owe it to yourself to pick up uh, green apple hard candy and sour apple and mix it up and throw in 1% of sweetener and you have yourself an absolutely fantastic candy recipe. The next recipe on the list is... Yes, uh, you might enjoy the thumbnail of this recipe, which Dave ID10T created for it. This is the Wayne's Johnson. It's, an, it's a strap-on recipe, which is strawberry, apple, and watermelon. And um, what's so great about this recipe is that it utilizes my watermelon in like the perfect way. So well, in fact, that I kind of wish that I put these ingredients in watermelon and sold this as the one shot. If you've had watermelon before, you know how it kind of has these nice juicy watermelon qualities that's crisp and very fresh. And then he pairs that up with uh, strawberry and Fuji. And he creates this really vibrant, really wide, uh, uh, fruity flavor that's just, it's really, really addicting. If you enjoy strawberries, apples, watermelon, strap-on recipes, this one is easily my favorite one. And I've tried a bunch of them. And um, it, it's, it utilizes my watermelon, which is awesome. You know, I love seeing how he was able to kind of work that in there in such a way to really highlight not only the watermelon, but also lift up the other flavors as well. So I wanted to put it on this list and mainly because it's using my watermelon. And I know some of you guys might be hating, but you know what? This is my list, so you can fuck off. Go pick up watermelon, mix up the Wayne's Johnson by Dave, and I promise you, you will enjoy it. It's that good. Next on my list is... Yes, so Silky, Silky did it. Silky did it. This is buttermilk pie or like a chess pie, perfectly recreated. Silky did a masterful job of choosing the right ingredients to use in the buttermilk pie. It's, it's just a buttermilk pie and you're getting the perfect buttermilk pie like crust. And, and it's kind of hard to explain that subtle flavor that differentiates that crust from just a normal pie crust. It's a little bit more buttery, but there's like a certain caramelize caramelization of the sugar that's involved that gets emulated through this recipe. Now, when I first mixed this up, I thought it was a little bit astringent. The, the, the TPA butter for me is just a little bit too astringent at the front because of all of the acetylpropanol in there, but just let it sit, throw it in a cupboard for a couple of weeks and come back and you have a fucking phenomenal recipe. In fact, I have to vape some right now. It's just so good. It's just so good. It's 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 just really the the smart use of the butter, the biscuit, and the apple pie that creates this delicious buttery, flaky-like flavor, and then kind of finishing it off with the custard and the toasted marshmallow. I don't know what the toasted marshmallow is doing, but I don't taste it, and I can taste toasted marshmallow a mile away. I do not really taste it in this recipe. That's how well balanced it is, and that's how well crafted this recipe is. It's hidden in this recipe perfectly. And that exhale, that finish, is really where you're gonna get most of that delicious richness coming from it. The decay is super long on this flavor. It just kind of lingers and just velvet clouds fly out of your mouth. Delicious, delicious recipe. Easily one of my favorites uh, bakeries of the year and maybe even one of my favorite bakeries of all time. It's so, so good. Do yourself a favor, get the ingredients, mix this up, throw it in, in the cupboard for a few weeks and come back to it. And uh, you can thank me and Silky later. All right, let's vape it. Let's take one more rip off of it. All right, one more. All right, the next recipe on my list is... Yes, Nick Ev's, Nick EVZ's Honeycomb Custard makes the list for 2018. What I love about this custard is how different it is. It is not your usual custard, but it's still certainly a custard. It's a, it's a honey-based custard, so you're getting this really bright, sweet honey top note that rides throughout the entire vape 
finished off with a nice kind of rich custard, vanilla custard. It's not really eggy, it's not really buttery, it's not thick and rich, not, it's not a custard that you would, you would think of. It's not a custard that kind of highlights the Capella's vanilla custard. It, it really utilizes that custard as more of a foundation for the honey. There's subtle notes of bakery in there, but they don't kind of get in the way. The honey is still the main star of this recipe, and then you just finish up with this beautifully uh, vibrant vanilla custard and I, I wouldn't really call it rich I'd call it more vibrant and bright and that's kind of what I like about this custard It kind of takes the custard profile It does something completely new something that we haven't seen before because it could have easily went a different route with this It could have easily taken the, the the honey and kind of buried it in the custard Rather than doing it the other way where the custard is more of the foundation and the honey is the star and, and it just highlights how good that vape train honey is. If you're looking for a custard that packs a lot of sweetness, but something that you can vape a lot more than a, than a traditional custard, because custards can sometimes be too heavy and too, too dense, um, this is definitely one to look at because it's easily a much more pleasing and easy vape, you know, something that's very easy to consume. And uh, it definitely deserves a spot on the list. It's delicious. It's just a cool way to, 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 to kind of bend that profile and do something new with it. And uh, shout out Nick EVZ for this recipe. The next recipe on the list is... Double O Seven Cola is easily the most complex and intricate recipe on this list. It's essentially a cola recipe, uh, a normal kind of almost like a craft cola recipe that doesn't use any cola ingredients. And it really just showcases the masterful job that Alfred has when putting uh, ingredients together because you really need to know your ingredients well and he chose the exact right ingredients to use. It's such an insane recipe. It works so well. It's spot on a craft cola. I do wish it was a little bit thicker. I wish I wish it was a little bit more sticky, but just the fact that you know the 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 blood orange, the bourbon, the fizzy, the cinnamon and utilizing the WS23 in a way that doesn't make it a cool recipe, but you rather utilizing it as somewhat of a carbonated uh, effect works. You definitely pick up some of that carbonation in this mix. You're definitely picking up those cola spicy notes. You're definitely picking up some of the caramel the caramel aspect of the recipe. And you're getting something that's really, really delicious. Now, the only problem that I have with this recipe is that it's a cola. And cola just isn't my thing. I, I'm just not the big, I love Coke. But in terms of vaping it, it's just not really my, my profile of choice. That said, it's really hard to deny the, the genius that kind of went into crafting this recipe. It's just such a, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. The only reason why it's not my absolute favorite recipe of the year is because it's not an all day vape for me. This is more of like a novelty. This is more of something that, unless you really like cola, this is more something that you mix up to see what mixing is all about, what you can actually do with these aromas. This is what someone who really knows their ingredients, this is what you can do with mixing and, um, oh. Wow, just a beautiful, great job Alfred Pudding. 007 Cola is just a masterpiece. But now we're on to my absolute favorite, favorite recipe of the year. Drum roll please. Yes, Folk Art took the top spot with Mayan Milk. And uh, this is a chocolate milk recipe, and it's easily the best chocolate milk recipe, the best chocolate anything ever produced in vaping, period. There's nothing better than Mayan milk out right now. It is so, so good. So what I think is the most memorable thing about this recipe, and the reason why I have such an attachment to it, is because chocolate is like my thing. I love chocolate. And when I go for a candy, I'm choosing a chocolate bar every time. I love chocolate milk. I drink it all the time but I've never been able to quite get that chocolate vape, that, that perfect chocolate milk vape. So we've been trying to kind of, me and him have been kind of battling back and forth and trying to figure this chocolate thing out. But it's finally been done towards the end of 2018 when I released my golden ticket and then he came out with Maya Milk. This, this is it, this is the one. This is the be all end all of chocolate vapes. It kind of closes that chapter on a profile that we've been searching for for years. And the, the result is just a magnificently rich, 
delicious velvety chocolate flavor that has the sticky syrupy chocolate notes in there, but also that sort of fluffy and velvety kind of milky dairy that kind of follows through. You mix this up, you let it sit for a few days, maybe you let it sit for a week or two, and it's just such a deli- like if you like chocolate, this is it. This is the one. I was lucky enough to get a taste of this when we were in Vegas, he was also there and I got to taste his Mayan milk and I was just remember thinking like, I need more of this. I need to make all of it. <laughs> I need to mix up as much as possible of this. And then he finally released the final recipe. It did, did a couple of tweaks to it. And it's just, it's just perfect. It's a perfect, it, for me, it's a perfect recipe. It has like a really well-balanced flavor stage, so it's not too wide, but it's also not too narrow. You're gonna get those rich chocolate notes that have depth, that have like certain like touches of, of nuttiness to them. And then again, you're following through with the dairy notes that come after. It's just, it's crazy how, how sticky the chocolate seems. Like it really does feel like it's kind of mixed in a Hershey's chocolate syrup into a milk. It's just a really delicious recipe. It's my all day vape since it's, since it's come out and uh, I can't get enough of it. It's absolutely my favorite recipe. Folk Art did such an amazing job on it and uh, I can't wait to see what else he comes up with. So shout out to all of the mixers involved. Shout out to all the mixers who made the list and all the mixers who are out there crafting crazy recipes and, and doing what you can to kind of push the community along and, and stretch the boundaries of mixing because that's really what I enjoy most about this community is just just the great work that each and every mixer is doing and just the, the awesome stuff that comes out of it, the delicious vapes that we get as a result of all this hard work. It's also awesome seeing new mixers come up and, and craft these crazy recipes like, you know, a lot of these mixers on this list this year weren't on previous lists. And uh, you know, some of these mixers even just started in 2018 and re releasing recipes at least. So seeing that is just, it's just so cool. And um, that's, that's what I love about it. I, I love that aspect of it. And pushing us along in the community to, to motivate us and, and really just showcasing the creativity that this community has. So yeah, shout out to everyone. It's, <laughs> shout out to everyone, cause it's awesome. I love being a part of this community. And uh, hopefully next year, uh, we see some more crazy recipes, some more boundary pushing, pushing recipes, some more delicious recipes. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and also subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Don't forget to head over to my website, diyordivaping.com, where all of the links to these recipes will be. So uh, link that link will be down in the description. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at diyordivaping. And uh, yeah, man, that's it. I'm gonna catch you guys later. Keep on mixing. Much love. Thanks, everyone.